Hello and welcome to my second last lesson on integration. In the last lesson, I'll be taking you through examples of the same area. But for this particular lesson, I'm going to take you through the introduction of um, um, the application of integration to kinematics. And so let's begin. As we begin, let me say the following comments. Number one, we are already familiar with the fact that integration is a reverse of differentiation. In other words, integration and differentiation, differentiation are a reverse operations. We are also familiar with the fact that differentiating displacement with respect time to time gives us velocity. And also, differentiating velocity with respect to time gives us acceleration. That uh, those three comments there therefore imply that integration of velocity with respect to time gives us displacement and again integration of acceleration with respect to time gives us velocity and this this is the the major point of this particular lesson and even the application part that's going to be tackled in the second lesson so integrating velocity gives us displacement and integrating acceleration gives us velocity let me say it in another way. If we look at this table, we have differentiation of displacement with time giving velocity, differentiating velocity with respect to time giving acceleration. We have um, integration of velocity giving us uh, displacement and integration of acceleration giving us velocity. When you're going down on the left, that is differentiating displacement, it first gives us velocity. If we differentiate again, it gives us acceleration. But if we're going upwards, we are integrating acceleration to get velocity and again integrating velocity to give us displacement. Therefore, as we go down, we're doing repetitive differentiation, first of all to get velocity and then acceleration. When you are integrating repetitively, going upwards, we integrate to get first of all velocity and integrating that velocity to give us acceleration, to give us a displacement. Let's see how this plays out in actual examples. And so we have a question there. A ball is kicked vertically upwards from a point 0 0.5 meters above the ground at velocity of uh, 16 meters per second. Assuming that the ac acceleration due to gravity is 10 meters per second squared, determine an expression for its velocity t seconds later and expression for the height above the ground t seconds later and the maximum height of the ball. Uh, let's understand the information that there is in the question. First of all, we are told the ball is kicked vertically upwards from a point 0 0.5 meters. So we should assume before the ball starts moving, it's already 0 0.5 meters above the ground. Therefore, I can say at t is equal to 0, s, which is height, which is displacement, is 0 0.5 meters. Again, velocity at the same time is 16 meters per second. Since the, sen the sentence goes on to say, um, it's vertically upwards from a point 0 0.5 meters above the ground at a velocity. So this is the velocity that it's beginning with. So when t was 0, velocity was already zero, was already 16 meters per second. Then we are told to assume that acceleration due to gravity is 10 meters per second squared. That tells us that acceleration in our case is going to be a negative figure, but 10, negative 10, because it is decelerating the same way, since it's going against gravity, it's being overcome by gravity every second, such that this um, velocity is reducing by 10 meters per second every single second. Now, with that, we go to the first part of the question. The question is, look for an expression for velocity t seconds later. Well, we need to know that velocity is the integration of acceleration with respect to time. That is this second equation here. Acceleration integrating it we get velocity and therefore we're going to integrate velocity and uh, acceleration and acceleration is negative 10 so integrating that we get uh, minus 10 t plus c that is velocity is generally given by minus 10 t uh, plus c and this is an indefinite integral no wonder we have a constant c we now want to look for the value of the constant c now earlier in these four equations we have here we say that t is equal to 0 when v is 16. Therefore, you could substitute t with 0 and v with 16 respectively, as I have done in that particular equation. And as you saw, you continue to get that c is actually 16. So the velocity at any time t is given by minus 10t plus 
the value of c we've just got which is 16 and therefore the answer for part a is v is equals to negative 10 t plus 16. let's move on to part b the height above the ground t seconds later so height again you should know its displacement and it's represented by letter s now we know that displacement is a integration of velocity with respect to time and therefore we integrate uh, this velocity function we just arrived at in part a with respect to time to get displacement and therefore we get this this formula here again it's an indefinite integral and therefore we have an added constant c let's determine what c is by using again this information that we had before we did part a when t was zero s was 0 0.5 it was 0 0.5 meters above the ground the height was that and that's our displace displacement therefore we should substitute t here with zero and again substitute s with 0 0.5 which will help us in getting the value of c and i have done it there and if you continue that you get c is 0 0.5 and therefore we now know confidently that displacement of this particular ball at any given time is given by minus 5 t squared plus 16 t plus 0 0.5 let's go to the last part part c and we're doing it in this particular space here the maximum height before i attempt that let me put across some two statements that i think are important number one because the statement says we look for the maximum height we're determining the maximum height it means we are maximizing something in this case displacement maximization means you look for the first derivative equate to zero and solve so maximizing height means we first look for the first derivative and the first derivative of max of, of height or displacement is actually velocity and equate that to zero another thing since the ball is kicked vertically upwards we know that the velocity continuously decreases by 10 meters per second every second and therefore that velocity continues it begins at 16 meters per second continued reducing there's a point where velocity was zero that is the maximum point before the ball takes a turn and goes the opposite direction and therefore the maximum height is also when velocity was instantaneously zero and therefore i'm going to optimize displacement and therefore say that that's a point where velocity is actually zero i've said the same thing two different ways now we already have the expression for velocity this one so we're going to substitute v with zero so i say negative 10 t plus 16 is equal to zero and therefore simplify that you get t is equal to 1.6 seconds therefore it was at maximum height 1.6 seconds after it was kicked right so now we can obtain the maximum height the ball had gone to in that 1.6 seconds afterwards and therefore just use the displacement function which is this one here and substitute t with 1.6 that particular way continue to solve to get it is 13.3 meters above the ground and i think um, that is that is that's the answer for the part c let's go to another question we know that the particle moves on a straight line with constant acceleration at t was at t is equal to zero the velocity is u and it is at a fixed point o if u if v is a velocity after t seconds show that those two formulas there let me say two things one we are told that at t is equal to zero velocity is u so similar to what we have done in the previous question we should put when t is equal to zero v is equal to u again when t is equal to zero it's at a fixed point therefore we say that t is equal to zero when s is zero also that is necessary for us to understand and then we begin with the first question we told uh, we look for v we show that v is equals to u plus a t this is the first less the first uh, um, equation of linear motion and so we're going to say let a be the acceleration let's represent acceleration with the letter a we're going to say therefore velocity is the integration of velocity is in the integration of acceleration with respect to time so integrating a with respect to time which gives us v which is velocity is equals to at plus c 
this again is an indefinite integral and we need to look for the value of c we are going to say the following number one t is equal to zero when v is u that's the statement i said before we started doing part a this one t is equal to zero when velocity is u so when v was u t was zero and therefore we should substitute v with u and t with zero respectively in this formula we just got here which is u is equals to a in brackets zero plus c and reducing that you get simplifi simplifying that you, it reduces to u is equals to c so in this function we got here c is actually u and therefore we can confidently say this and uh, obviously that's our answer we will try to show that v is equals to u plus a t you can just switch these two terms and that's the answer we go to part b displacement s means for means displacement in kinematics and therefore that's what you're looking for again we should know that displacement is the integration of velocity with respect to time we already have a function that shows us velocity therefore integration is integrating that velocity that velocity function gives us displacement and that's what we have here and it gives us uh, this particular expression a t squared all over 2 plus u t plus c is equals to s there's an s here again remember the cons the statement i said before we started part a at t is equals to zero s is zero because of this part at t is equals to zero it's at a fixed point o so we assume that when the particle had not started moving the displacement was zero and therefore we can say that uh, t is equals to zero when s is equals to zero and therefore substituting in this expression substituting t with zero and s with zero we're going to get this kind of a thing which reduces to this one zero is equals to c or c is equals to zero therefore in this function we really don't have anything for c it's just a zero and therefore we can confidently say that displacement is actually a t squared all over two plus u t and that gives us the answer that you are anticipating s is equals to u t plus half a t squared and that's the answer so that brings me to the end of my first lesson on the application of integration to kinematics look out for the next one which which comes at the same time with this particular video